So we went from a national prison population of about 200,000 in 1970 to now we have about 1.5 million people in prison. And that's the largest incarcerated population of any industrialized country. So we're 5% of the world's population, yet we hold 25% of the world's prisoners. Is this really the land of the free when we in fact have a third of all young black men incarcerated on any one day. So I think people are starting to to rethink who who should be in prison. And also it's been a tremendous burden financially. California prisons had lawsuits on virtually every aspect of operating the prisons, mental health care, dental care, juvenile justice, programming, parole, and it was costing the state a lot of money. In 2011, the case went all the way up to the Supreme Court. It's called Coleman Plata, and it basically sued the California prison system for violations of the Eighth Amendment to the Constitution, which is cruel and unusual punishment. What it basically said is that California prisons were so overcrowded at that current time that inmates in them could not get adequate medical or mental health care. So the Supreme Court actually ordered California to reduce its prison population. The response of the California legislature to that Supreme Court Coleman Plata ruling was in fact to realign or downsize California's prisons and shift the burden to local jails. So it wasn't that you couldn't be incarcerated, but you could not be incarcerated at the state level if you were convicted of a property or drug crime. And so that shifted thousands and thousands of inmates to a county jail uh, instead of state prisons. So one of the positive aspects about realignment is that the state gave the counties half the cost of prison. And so now we're five years into realignment. We're seeing many, many of those counties develop pretty stringent and effective rehabilitation programs. We're seeing a lot of substance abuse programs. We're seeing family unification programs. We're seeing day reporting centers. A lot of the money is going to probation departments, which were starved for treatment resources. So this infusion of funds to the counties has been on the average of $1 billion a year. So the important question I think that now we are working on here at Stanford and in other places is how do we want them coming home? So one of the promising programs that we have is something called reentry centers. So when an inmate is released, they will go home and they will live with their own family if they can support themselves and, and do that and they have that support. But every day they will go to a reentry center and that reentry center will match their needs, whether or not they need resume help, whether or not they need vocational training, whether or not they need housing, substance abuse, veterans affairs, medical care. We actually in California have developed now 25 of those reentry hubs across the state with the realignment dollars that the governor gave to local counties to deal with uh, the influx of prisoners. We're going to have a ballot initiative that's going to be in November of 2016. And Governor Brown has proposed, and he's taking this to the voters, a new rehabilitation and public safety initiative. And it's going to um, incentivize people to participate in programs. You know, turning a, a criminal offender around is like bending granite. They have been through every social system, education, family, churches, probation, jails. And so to say, now I want to figure out how I'm going to do some programming with you. Many of them don't want to participate, so it's not just giving them money uh, and putting programs on the shelf. So it's not about just programming and money. It's also about trying to incentivize offenders to participate in the programs. So the United States is actually making dramatic improvements in U.S. prisons. Uh, for the first time in 40 years, in 2012, the prison population in the United States overall stopped growing. It was increasing at a rate of 4 to 10 percent per year, and now we have basically stability. Every state, in essence, is trying to do what California did, which is remove the nonviolent lower level, move them back to the community. Because what, what you really want is public safety. 